What we're going to see here now is a application of Gutex wood fibre on the outside of a pitched roof. Gutex Ultra Term will be used here. I think it's a 60, was it a 60 millimeter Gutex Ultra Term board? And we're going to just see the fixing of it above the rafter and the detailing at the eaves, how to deal with butt joints and so on. So I'm not going to say any more. I'm going to move over to Roman and to Dave now. Okay. Thank you, Niall. And yeah, welcome to, to the practical afternoon session. So to say what we have here, as you see, is, is the roof. We have the board pre-cut. We didn't want to cut the boards here then today. Um, what we do is, um, yeah, we install it. And while we install it, we ex explain a little bit what we do, why we do it. But if you have questions or if there's a detail or anything that you would like to know more about, please feel free to ask. To start with, uh, what we show here is um, the fearing pieces that Uli mentioned earlier on. Um, they are basically the base for the boards to sit on. So you, you can do it this way, but it's not the only way doing it. So an alternative to it would be, um, I would, you know, you could, in theory, you could start at the very bottom of the rafters installing your board and use the end of the rafter as your line. Um, but then you're wasting, you're wasting a bit. Depending on your overhang, if you have a 600 mil overhang, which can happen at the passive house, south facing, you're wasting a good bit of material. So I like to start at the insulation level of the external wall. So where the insulation of the external wall meets my roof insulation, bring that in one line. And that can be done by either using those filling pieces, or you could, of course, just install a button, cross rise and that gives you a good starter truck. <coughs> so we just start with the first board, and with the first board I cut off the tongue or the groove. Uh, well, it's always the tongue, really. And then we have a situation where we have to bring, like the, the Gutex really is the watertight layer. Um, I call it the second weather tightness or rain tightness layer. And in case doing construction or even later on, if a slate or a tile breaks, or if you get wind-driven rain underneath your slates, the water has to go somewhere. So that's why you guide it into the gutter. <coughs> to guide it into the gutter, um, you need to fill in here in between. And I see it fairly often that people are using a roofing membrane straight into the gutter. No matter what kind of breathable membrane you're using, it uh, doesn't matter which brand it is, it's always a bad idea, I'm afraid. Two things happen. The membranes are not UV stable and they deteriorate over time. And secondly, they're breathable and absorb water. So I had a case where the membrane was in the gutter and actively pulled the water out of the gutter, up the roof again, and then into the wall. And it did cause rather big Trouble, problems. So what we do here is we pre-install a layer. This is a 5U. Yeah. A 5U felt. Um, that would be the normal. Which, which guides the water into the gutter. But we need to bridge that area here. Mm. So that for we install a strip of roofing membrane just to the first board. So you remember Uli said there's no membrane needed on the boards for water tightness. But just at the very bottom, we bring a felt from here over the, over the uh, uh, bitumen felt and then into the gutter. Mm. <laughs> there are other systems as well. You get kind of trays, which are basically PVC trays mm. that you can install here, and that will bring the, the water into the gutter. For some reason, I don't know what it is. In mm. Ireland, you always guide the felt into the gutter. Mm. In Germany, we always do it behind the gutter. So the thinking behind it is, if you see any dripping, you know that you better check your roof. There could be a tile broken, there could be a slate broken. So you know, if, if, if the water runs down behind your gutter, that's your alarm button or your, 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 your system. So you know. On the other hand, if you guide it into the gutter, OK, yeah, you're safe. You have no dripping. <laughs> anyway, that's just by the, by the way. So, um, yeah, first board here, 
second board over there. Obviously, you want to make sure that you have a good tight joint. For oh yeah, for tools, for using tools, um, you can use hand saws, uh, skill saws. They all work. Um, they tend to clog up. It produces a lot of sawdust okay. when you cut it. So Dave, for example, yeah. has a brilliant quite saw. dangerous using a skill saw because the guards tend to clog, yeah. and yeah. you'll also burn out a skill saw very quickly. And it produces like there's just millions of fibers in each board, and as soon as you make a cut, you release a lot of them. So it's best to have a you know a vacuum system uh, hooked up to a to to your saw. Um, what we use is it, it, it's called a sword saw, and what it is basically it's like a, a regular skill saw, except you have the blade of a chainsaw on it. So you can cut all your mitre cuts, whichever way you want, and it's on a track, so you're always guaranteed a dead straight cut, or your mitres are exact. And it will cut up to, you know, 200 mil in, in depth. And, um, you know, on, on a, something like a 60 mil, 70 mil, you might get away with a skill saw. Once you go, you go above that, you, you struggle to cut the, the boards. You can use a hand saw, but by the time you're from here to there, you'll be quite tired. So, you know, um, the proper tools make this a, a, a very, very easy installation. And you might be a little bit shocked now, but in Germany there is the health and safety level is not as high as it is in Ireland. No. And chainsaws are chainsaws not fine from sight. Chainsaws are actually the number one tool. Basically every every roofer and carpenter has a chainsaw on his belt. And be it buttons, be it wood fiber boards. <laughs> but that's I'm a bit of a cultural we're a bit difference. <laughs> safe <and> conscious here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So we so install the first strip yeah, of membrane. Yeah. Next step then really would be the the membrane over the first over the first roll, the first layer. Um, there are different ways doing it. Basically, what you could do is actually I show that first. What you could do is you could have a smaller strip of membrane and you know put that in first in your valley and then have one left run right. It's a good and traditional normal way of doing it. Uh, to make it a bit easier for today we decided on a variation of it which is you put your first membrane in and just for convenience I use the line here as my guide for the top of the roof and then you basically bring it in behind the, the board line it up here with the board and you can see here we've, we've cut out the corner a bit come closer if you want to and just fold that in behind as well And that way you get your, <coughs> your membrane on. Yeah, we even put the leak in the roof. We even put a yeah. hole in the roof. Just to simulate. <laughs> Just to show <laughs> you know, how easy it actually flows off like this. It's real life conditions here. <laughs> <coughs> and then the second one, for now you can, you know, it can be just, again, cut around dormers, any obstacles, bring it in, same story, follow the line, fold it in behind. And then this, this is the second layer, we bring it in, and I just make sure that it stays at this face on the overlap. So I do not continue it over the valley, because then you have a risk of water kind of flowing in behind it. Mm. If you keep it at that face, I like to tape it now, and then that's perfectly watertight, windtight, weathertight. Um, I did build three timber frame passive houses in Ireland, and we, um, we used the Gutex uh, 
not on all of them, but on some of them. And for the woofing membrane, I always tape it. So all, all, all of the woofing membrane is taped. 